Hey guys, uh, Scott here again. It's making my video for today. Um, I meant to make a video yesterday, I really did. I was going to try to make this video, actually. And then I get interrupted, and the rest of my night just was busy, so I didn't have time. After this, it'll be a daily thing, I'll make time. Um, today, we're going to talk about a, a follow-up on the topic we talked about Friday, the stimulus package. I know that's more politics, and a lot of you didn't want me to talk about that, but... Um, this is a follow-up that will actually impact a lot of us, so I f feel like it's worth talking about. Um, and then I'm going to answer the questions you guys had for me on Friday that I didn't get to, so it'll be a shorter video. shouldn't be too long. Um, so yeah, I'll just begin. Um, on Friday, we talked about the stimulus package that Congress had passed, that Congress had passed on Friday. Um, the main crux of that stimulus package was a $1,200 check to every American 18 and up and $500 to children, to their parents, um, which sounds great because, you know, as most of us are 18, 19, 17, 18, 19, um, and probably have jobs, it would be really nice to get a $1,200 check. I know that I was planning on spending mine on, on a new car. I was going to take that money along with some other money I had and buy a new car for college. <laughs> Leave it to Congress to find a way to mess something like this up. It turns out that we, as 18-year-olds who are still living in our parents' house, will not get a check. Even if we worked and paid taxes. That's, that makes me really mad. I'm sure it makes a lot of you really mad, too. Um, the reason for that is because our parents can claim us as, as a dependent on their taxes, so they get a tax break and we don't get the check. Which is really, really dumb. Um, the same thing goes for college kids, too. If you're in college and living at home, and your parents can claim you as a dependent because you live in their house, even if you pay bills, so even if you have a car bill, or rent, or a gas bill, or anything, you don't get the check, because your parents can claim you and get a tax break for that. It's really dumb. The same also applies to 17-year-olds. So parents with kids that are 17 won't get $500 for having a child, because the legal definition of a child that the bill relies on defines a child as anybody who's 16 and under. So therefore, 17 and 18-year-olds' parents won't get the $500. So my family got shafted out of $1,700, um, which really makes me mad. Leave it to Congress to pass a bill as expensive and wide-ranging as this and still find a way to screw over a specific segment of the population. Especially the one that needs the money. Like, I, like going into college, I could use $1,200. I'm sure a lot of you could use $1,200 to start the next part of your life. I know college kids could use $1,200, you know. So the fact that Congress would screw us out of the money is just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that was really the only major update I wanted to talk about on that. Um, just wanted to give you guys a heads up. If you were expecting a check, don't. Don't hold your breath. Unless Congress changes something or passes another bill, you're not going to get one. So there's that. Alright, so let's answer some questions, shall we? Um... As I read through these earlier, I got some pretty interesting ones, so I'll try to keep my answers short. I had some complaints that I was uh, really um, long-winded on my questions, so I'll keep my answers to these a little shorter. First question, what kind of music do you like? Um, I like rock. I listen to a lot of rock. Um, a lot of 90s. So I want to say rock, I mean like 90s grunge up, so anything... That, Nirvana, or post-Nirvana. Not a big... I, I hate 80s rock. I don't like hair bands and stuff. And stuff before that is just not a huge fan. Um, but yeah, Nirvana, Foo Fighters, um, Nickelback, Shine Down, Volbeat. Um, yeah, bands like that. Um, good bands. I, I listen to rock like that. Um, I listen to 90s and 2000s pop as well, which sounds weird for me. I know, but I, I like I like pop like that. Um, my favorite musician at the moment, and actually has been this way for about a year now, is Rob Thomas. For those of you know know him, he was the lead singer for Matchbox 20, which is a 90s band. Um, but his solo career, he put out a lot of good stuff. Um, starting in 2005, he's made a lot of good music on his own, which is worth listening to. So, yeah, check him out. I listen to some rap, too. I like Eminem. It's good. I like some newer pop, rap. I don't know what you define it as. Hip-hop, I guess. Yeah. Next question. What do you think the U.S. should do for the environment? 
Um, it depends, honestly. Um, if you're talking about the federal government, like the president and Congress, absolutely nothing. Congress is not authorized to re regulate climate. The president is not authorized to regulate climate. The EPA is unconstitutional and should be torn apart. Um, that's just not within Congress's power. And so at that level, you shouldn't be doing anything. At a state level, I think there's a lot we probably could do. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to climate regulations at a state level, <clears throat> especially if a factory causes externalities that harm individuals. Like you can charge factors of that as tort law. Um, I'm not opposed to a carbon tax. I mean, if you can show me studies the where it works. For those of you who don't know, a carbon tax is, is essentially a tax on the, the amount of carbon that a company produces. And you can you can like trade carbon credits and stuff. They have it up in Canada, cap and trade and such. Um, so I'm not opposed to that. At a local level, obviously we can your local township can regulate you know, light pollution, sound pollution, um, stuff like that, how much trash you produce, you know. So at local and state levels, I think there's a lot that could be done. You just got to show me a plan. At a national level, nothing. No Green New Deal, no climate regulations, no EPA. This is not constitutional. So yeah, that's your answer. If you want to follow up, text me. I'll, I'll respond. Next question. Does Trump display accurate facts about COVID-19? Can be opinionated. No. No, he does not. And anybody who says he does obviously has not watched any of his press conferences. Um, he's he's denied its existence since it first made national awareness and international news. Um, he's lied about its effects. He's flip-flopped on, on his position on it. He's accused doctors of stealing masks. He's said that he's not going to help states that don't praise him. I mean, he... Just through and through, he's acted like a petty dictator who is full of himself, and so the answer is no. Um, and it's fun to watch because all of his sycophants and his fans will parody what he says, will re repeat it, parrot what he says, and then the next day when he changes his opinion, they'll go back and say, no, what he actually meant was this, even though it's the exact opposite. Um... Like, honestly, at this point, I think he could come out and say 2 plus 2 equals 5 one day, and then have all of his believers say, yeah, 2 plus 2 equals 5. And then the next day, come out and he'd Trump come out and say, no, it actually equals 3. And all of his followers would be like, you know, on the first day, when he said it equals 5, he actually meant it equals 3, and you and the media are dumb. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's all I really have to say about it. Who is your favorite politician? Okay, that depends on what the time period is. Um... So I'll break it down of all time and living. Of all time, my favorite politician is a tie between Thomas Jefferson and Grover Cleveland as president. Um, Thomas Jefferson was a phenomenal president and just constitutionalist. I mean, he wrote the Declaration of Independence, and he was like one of the few founding fathers that actually understood what the Constitution said when they wrote it. Right? Washington, Adams, Madison, and Monroe, to an extent, sort of bent the Constitution to match their views and so expanded some of these powers. Jefferson did not. Or when he did, he acknowledged what he was doing and said that it was illegal, but he felt like he needed to do it anyway. Um, famously, when he purchased Louisiana from the French, he, he said that the purchase was unconstitutional, but it was also necessary. Um, he asked Congress to pass an amendment to give him that power, and when they didn't, he did it anyway, and then stated that he would be impeached for it, and he would accept that on his record if only to help America at the time. Now, I don't think it was unconstitutional. Congress is authorized to pass treaties with other countries, and the president can negotiate those treaties, and purchasing land is, is a treaty. So, I mean, it's the same concept, but he was just very principled. Grover Cleveland was the same way. Very principled guy. In a type. He was for the gold standard. He was for the meritocracy. He expanded the U.S. Navy, and he stood by the Constitution and vetoed spending bills that would help people, even if it cost him the presidency. Um, the current politician uh, is a man by the name of Justin Amash. Um, he's a congressman from Michigan. He's an independent. He was part of the GOP until May. He came out and said the Mueller report meant Trump should be impeached, which caused a lot of flack in the Republican Party, as you would imagine, and he got kicked out. So, I mean, he's just, he's a very principled man. He stands fiscally, he's conservative, socially he's libertarian, 
His foreign policy is a I don't agree with, but he at least explains why he believes that. Um, it's very principled. He understands the Constitution and stands by it. What is your opinion on Mason Irvine? I don't know enough about him. I don't, I don't ever talk to him, so uh, not applicable, I guess. I don't have an opinion. Um, add some humor and some flavor to your podcast. Um, yeah, I probably should. I guess I'll do a joke of the day, if that's what you guys want. Um, if you have any suggestions for how to add humor and flavor, shoot me a text. Um, and follow up combos. Like some personality and movement so it's not so static. Um, I could do it on a treadmill. I guess I could take it to the gym and film there. I might do a video outside. It's really nice. Um, yeah, but I wave my hand in movement. But other than that, I'm not sure what you really want. So let me know. Um, okay. What's your opinion on Truman Dake and Connor Swanson? They're good friends. Yeah, they're pretty cool guys. I like talking to them. Yeah, that's about it. Will you help me with government if I need it? Yes. Whoever you are, I will help. And that goes for everybody for every subject. Um, if you want help in a, in a, a class and you don't want to ask your teacher, just shoot me a text. I'm not going to tell anybody you asked for help. I'll be glad to help you. We can Skype, or text, or do a study session somewhere. Um, whatever you guys need. I have a lot of free time, and I'm pretty knowledgeable on a lot of things. So if I don't know it, I'll tell you. If I do know it, I'll help. So just, just let me know. Um, that was the last question. So yeah, uh, like I said, a little shorter video, not as long. Um, I need topics for tomorrow's video, so if you want to shoot me a topic, I'll put up a YOLO, and you guys can drop topics there too. Um, but yeah, um, but whatever. Yeah, just give me a topic to talk about. I don't know what you guys think of my hair, my bangs. It's bad. I need a haircut. But all the haircut places are closed, so at the moment I'm just letting it grow out. Or oh, my facial hair. Um, gonna let that grow out. You know, I might have a beard by the time we get to graduation. Who knows? If you if you guys have a comment on my hair or facial hair, just let me know that too. I guess I'll talk about that. Um, otherwise, yeah. Again, stay safe um, and have a nice day. I'll see you in the next video.